Here we are on uh, topic C2.5, salts and electrolysis for key stage 4 additional science or triple AQA science. Um, we're now going to look at the topic of electrolysis. Um, <clears throat> so we've got to look at three things here. A, when a substance uh, is melted or molten and or dissolved in water, the ions are free to move about within the liquid or solution. Um, passing electric current through ionic substances that are molten, for example lead, bromide, or in solution, breaks them down into elements. This process is called electrolysis, and the substance that is broken down is called the electrolyte. During electrolysis, uh, positively charged ions move to the negative electrode, and negatively charged ions move to the positive electrode. Uh, the first person to explain electrolysis was actually Michael Faraday. He was a physicist uh, to all intents and purposes. And he worked on this and many other problems nearly 200 years ago. So his work formed the basis of an understanding of electrolysis that we still use today. Some really good stuff as well for GCC bite size for this topic. <clears throat> now, the word electrolysis means splitting up uh, by using electricity. An electrolysis views an electric current to break down or decompose a substance made of ions into simpler substances, so an ionic structure. We call the substance broken down by electrolysis the electrolyte. So here we've got two, the two examples really. So this one is molten lead bromide where we heat it and we have bromide gas given off or bromine gas, sorry and you have molten lead that drips off and forms a little bead of lead at the bottom and then you can separate the two and you have lead and you have a gas and you can use both of these things for different special purposes. And another example you could have is copper bromide in solution. So the copper bromide splits up and you get a positive here. So you get a negative attraction, so the bromine comes to the positive electrode and bubbles off and you get copper plating here because you have a negative on this electrode and the copper is positive so it's attracted and it actually copper plates the electrode and then later on you can scrape it off. <clears throat> so this demonstration would need a fume cover because bromine is toxic and corrosive. We've already talked about the idea um, it's, it's just very simple, you're getting electricity supplied by a chemical cell. As soon as you start to dip the electrodes into the solution, the light bulb will come on as electrolysis occurs and electrons flow around the circuit. Now, crucially think about conventional current will flow positive to negative, but in this case we need to think very carefully because actually it's all about the movement of electrons which are a negative particle. So although conventional current goes anti-clockwise in this case. The electron flow is clockwise. It goes negative, it donates, because it donates, think about the lead being positive too, it donates the, the electrons to it to make it into the metal from the ion. And the formula will be simply lead bromide, PBBr2 liquid goes to lead plus bromine, so PBI and Br2 gas. Now think about it, the two it's okay, it's transferred through, hasn't it? So we'd have two bromine ions in the water separate, but when they come together to form the gas, they have to be as a pair, okay? One lead goes to one lead. <coughs> the light bulb goes on because electricity is flowing. Now simply put then, the dissolving method um, is a little bit more difficult to predict what will be formed. This is because water also forms ions, which we've seen before, H plus and the OH minus ions, <clears throat> so the product at the anode and the cathode is not always exactly what we might expect unless we consider the water as well. When we electrolyze a solution of copper bromide in water, copper ions move to the negative electrode, the cathode, and the bromide ions move to the positive electrode or anode. The copper bromide is split into two elements of the electrodes. So we've got copper bromide, Cu, Br2, aqueous, goes to copper plus bromine, Cu plus Br2. No, covalent compounds cannot be split by electrolysis. It must be ionic. Now, if we have a little look at um, an animation that I've got here that I made, a very simple idea, which is that label out of the way. It's supposed to be a drag and drop game, but um, I've just utilized it for our talk today. So if we look, here we've got a solution. Okay, so this one will be copper chloride. 
So it's a greeny bluey solution. And what I've tried to show is, is that the chlorine ions or the chlorides are popping out of the solution and being attracted to this positive anode and the copper metal, the two pluses, are attracted to this other electrode, the negative one, and I've got the electrons flowing around and being donated at this end, and the electrons here being pulled away, pulled off that anode, and donated, and that's forming this gas. We've got the electrolysis vessel, and it will just keep going on until eventually we run out of chlorine and copper. So slowly, that will go down and down and down until nothing happens. Remember what we said, you have to be very careful with this one because the chlorine gas is very nasty. So that's the end of this introduction to electrolysis.